This famous equation of a line is not actually linear. On the other hand, this curvy operation turns out to be linear. What is a linear transformation? Let's first make one thing clear. The equation y equals to mx plus c represents a straight line. The quantity m represents the gradient of the line, which measures how steep the line is. The quantity c represents the intercept and encodes the position of the line. In other words, this is the equation of a linear graph. However, this function is not a linear transformation. But that raises a crucial question. What is a linear transformation? To understand linear transformations, let's take some inspiration from rectangles. Here is a rectangle with base 3 and height 2, followed by another rectangle of base 4 and height 2. The area of the first rectangle is given by the height 2 multiplied by the base 3, and the area of the second rectangle is given by the height 2 multiplied by the base 4. As we allow the various lengths to change, so does the areas of both rectangles. The total area of this entire long rectangle is given by the area of the orange rectangle added to the area of the pink rectangle. On the other hand, this long rectangle has a base of 5 plus 7. This gives us an alternate calculation for its area, namely the height 2 multiplied by the long base 5 plus 7. And since these shapes add up to the same area, we should have the left and the right hand sides equaling each other. Furthermore, as we allow the various lengths to change, the left hand area and the right hand area should remain the same. Let's relabel the area of the orange rectangle as A of 3 and the area of the pink rectangle as A of 8. This also means that the area of the total rectangle is A of 3 plus 8. The key idea here is that no matter which lengths we choose, the equation should still remain the same, meaning that the area is able to split up addition. This gives us the first condition for a function f to be linear. Namely, if it can split up addition, f of u plus v should equal f of u plus f of v. There is a second condition required for a function to be linear, but we're going to explore that later on. This tells us from the get-go that the function g of x given by 2 times x plus 1 cannot be a linear function. And how do we know this? Well, suppose g is a linear function. Let's consider the quantity g of 1 plus 1. If g is linear, then g should be able to split up addition. In other words, the right-hand side should equal g of 1 plus g of 1. You can verify that the left-hand side simplifies to the number 5 and the right-hand side simplifies to the number 6. So if g is linear, 5 equals 6. But this is clearly impossible, which tells us that g cannot be linear. So what is this second condition required for a function to be linear? Consider yet another rectangle with height 2 and base 2. And suppose we stretch its base by a factor of 3. The area of the smaller rectangle is given by the height 2 multiplied by the original base 2. As the base of the original rectangle changes, so does the scaled base of the longer rectangle. The area of the rectangle is given by 2 times 
degree and after stretching, this area is scaled by a similar factor, namely the factor 3. On the other hand, the total area of the new rectangle is given by the base 2 multiplied by the stretched base 3 times 3. Since both areas are referring to the same rectangle, the left-hand side should equal the right-hand side. Furthermore, this relationship should remain true regardless of the base of the original rectangle and regardless of the scale factor by which we stretched the length of the original base. Once again, let's denote area of the original rectangle by A of 5, which means that the area of the 4 rectangle is A of 1.2 times 5. The key here is that regardless of the length of the original base, regardless of the scale factor by which we stretched, this relationship should hold. In other words, the second condition is that the function f is able to pull out scalar multiples. These are precisely the two properties satisfied by taking derivatives. The derivative of a sum of functions is the sum of the respective derivatives. Furthermore, the derivative of the stretch of a function is precisely the stretch of the original derivative. In other words, taking derivatives is a linear transformation. But the opposite of taking derivatives in calculus is taking integrals. In fact, the first property gives us a partial proof that the integral of a sum of two functions is the sum of the integrals of the respective functions. Likewise, when we take the integral of the stretch of an original function, we can pull out the stretch and multiply it with the integral of the original function. Finally, integration is used to define the Fourier transform. These properties help us prove that the Fourier transform of a sum is the sum of the two Fourier transforms, and the Fourier transform of a stretch equals the stretch of a Fourier transform. These are three famous linear transformations in calculus that satisfy the definition of a transformation being linear. In fact, this is the heart of studying linear algebra, whose main star is the linear transformation known as matrix multiplication, which you can check out more in the video here.